Hi, everybody. Hi, this is Steve Sepadesa, publisher of BayouBuzz.com. And today we have another discussion about uh, Internet and, uh, and, and some really interesting programs that are taking place uh, that actually are, uh, shortly. John Bennett uh, of InternetMedicine.com. Hey, John, and how are you doing today? Hey, Steve. How are you doing from Miami? <laughs> no, you're... You're in Miami, and I'm here in the New Orleans area, so I'm doing fine. Uh, Great. And how, how's everything in the Miami area doing? Well, right now it's dark. It's <laughs> dark. It's dark and warm. And warm. Well, let's 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 uh, shed some light on uh, some of the incredible things that you're doing, and uh, uh, you're going to put to, or you're putting together a uh, an international webcast. Uh, that is going to focus in on what's called uh, uh, 3D printing. So why don't you tell us about what 3D printing is, and then, uh, if you don't mind, talk to us about uh, what your program is about. Sure. Uh, before I explain what 3D printing is, uh, the age of digitalization, digitalization has brought about innovative ways to communicate. And one of the ways that we can communicate is by, obviously, the Internet, and video, video platforms like this platform, which, which uh, of course, allows us to educate people on what are te technologies like 3D printing. 3D printing is actually, uh, has been around for, for a while, more than 20, 30 years. However, lately, due to the power of computers, its growth has accelerated. Uh, and many people, myself included, when I first heard the term 3D printing, assumed it was like a copying like a Xerox machine, an object or something. However, it's not that at all. I think people understand it better if they call it by the term of additive manufacturing. In other words, they add layers onto a structure. Uh, the 3D printer is giving, uh, given a blueprint or a program to print something, and it essentially adds layers until a product is finished. Uh, and there's Got a lot of different applications now in medicine, which we'll talk about. Yeah, um, and now the program itself is four days, but one doesn't have to watch all four days. Why don't you tell us about the program? Or somebody can watch all four days, am I right? Right, right. Well, it's a virtual conference. Uh, everyone knows about the conferences where you go uh, and attend. This is, this is a conference type of material. In other words, the same type of speakers you would see at a conference. However, they're doing their presentation, their PowerPoint presentations on the internet uh, with the particular website we're collaborating with, brighttalk.com, which is a big webinar company. They essentially allow the presenter to upload their PowerPoint and to give an audio presentation. So it's like you're at a conference, except you're sitting at your uh, computer, smartphone, or laptop. Okay, so um, who, who's gonna be presenting? Yeah, it's, it's a four-day conference, uh, excuse me, uh, three-day conference, January 27th, 28th, and 29th. Um, we have a variety of speakers. Uh, we have right now, we have about 16 uh, from Russia, Spain, Ireland, Brazil, and Netherlands, and France, as well as the majority from the United States, uh, because the internet allows you to go anywhere, anywhere, and, and, and people can transmit just as well from Russia, as long as they have a good internet connection, as they can from Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> yeah, or New Orleans. Uh, so uh, are, are these uh, speakers, presenters, are they medical doctors, or are they professors, or what? Most of them are PhDs in bioengineering or subjects of that matter, of, of that, uh, uh, that type. Uh, most of them are researchers that are basically researching different uh, different areas of uh, applications of 3D printing in medicine. And, and that's why we went, went after them because they basically have something relevant to medicine, uh, which is of course our main thing at internetmedicine.com. Sure, sure. So uh, you would consider these people to be the experts in the field of 3D printing? Well, uh, I'm, yes, I, they, they do have to be experts in their certain area, and this is new. Uh, for example, 3D printing of cartilage. This is a new area 
of the application of the, this technology in science. So they're ones, one of the first ones there, so I guess you could call them experts, but there are a number of researchers around the world. Uh, and that's one thing we'd like to get together as an end uh, goal is to get these disparate researchers all over the world into one area so that it can, they can communicate. We hope eventually to have a 3D printing in medicine channel where they can communicate no matter where they're from. They can let each other know what they're doing. So uh, basically, as I appreciated, you would get the cells from, say, the cartilage, and then you would, through ma uh, additive manufacturing or 3D printing, uh, it, it would uh, create a, uh, an identical um, yeah. Yes. Yes. It, is that right? Yes. Yes. It, it, 3D printing exact types uh, or prints exactly or copies exactly the tissue from which it uses as a template. For example, cartilage is an exact replication and the resolution of printing is amazing. Uh, you can print, you can print a racing car the size of a human hair with good uh, actually good structure. I mean, they, they can get a lot of resolution from what they do. Uh, and, and in particular, cartilage cells, they can they can type exactly, a, a, well, what they start with is a stem cell, which is essentially a precursor or, or the first, the cell that all your cells start from, whether it be kidney, brain, liver, uh, nerve cells. Sure. Now, now, what they do is essentially they influence the stem cell to develop into a cartilage cell, uh, and they can copy it. And, and now they're trying to experiment of, of replacing worn down cartilage in, for example, a knee. So, so that, has, has anybody actually taken, taken, you know, a part of, say, somebody's body, reproduce it, and then, I guess, you know, with surgery or whatever? actually input it and, and it's yeah. a functioning uh, part of the person's body. Yeah, yeah. There are certain areas like skin. Uh, if you 3D skin, 3D print some skin, the, the, it's being used now in burns. Uh, rather than getting a graft from your own body or someone else, basically taking stem cells, whether it be from the sternum or wherever, uh, and copying them and, and influencing them to turn into skin. Um, and in China and certain countries, they're allowed to do a lot more than the United States because of regulation. And countries like China, they're 3D printing kidney cells, liver cells, not complete kidneys or not complete livers, but cells. They're, they're implanting them into humans. And there's no rejection because it's essentially your cells that are being placed. Uh, it's not as if you're getting a transplant from a different human being. You're taking your own cells and transplanting, transplanting them into your own body. Sure. Absolutely. Well, and we'll see exactly uh, what organs are, uh, what's the next organ that actually will be, uh, I guess, 3D printed. Um, so if people want to know more about the event, they should go to your website, uh, internetmedicine.com is that correct john yes internetmedicine.com in the top right corner there's an icon to to get to the correct page to register okay and it is free oh it's free oh okay yes. well there's nothing better than free uh, yes really absolutely um have i left anything out that you think that the audience might want to uh to know about no, no, this is, a, you know, this is the wonders of the internet. It gives you access to some of the top scientists in the world uh, with a technology uh, such as we're using with this interface of Bright Talk. You not only are able to hear uh, a top PhD from, any, from all over the world and listen to their presentation and you're going to be allowed to ask questions in live. Uh, you can't get any better than that. It's even better than TV. Yeah, yeah. Now you won't be able to actually see the uh, <coughs> the professors or the the, the presenters, but, but they will be making presentations. Am I correct about that? Yes, yes. It's not. Eventually, we hope to use Hangouts in doing this type of uh, uh, virtual conference. But right now, we're using the interface where it's strictly audio presentation of the presenter and a PowerPoint. So it's, you know, we're not able to see the face like we are with this platform of Zoom, which is excellent 
platform. I, I foresee seeing this type of platform when we interview a PhD, uh, and they can also give the PowerPoint and come back to the screen sure. and, and let people like you ask questions. That, that's where we're heading. Well, that's where we're heading, and right now we're heading out of this program. So, okay. uh, Dr. John Bennett, uh, I really thank you for taking your time, and and uh, I, I know that uh, I can see that uh, right now there are a number of people actually watching this, so um, I want to say hi and goodbye to them. So take care, and the, the dates again for the program are? January 27th to 29th. Okay, and go, and just go to Internet Medicine. Dr. Internetmedicine.com at the top of the page. To get more information. Okay. Yes. And, and uh, uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Okay. I just stopped it. Hold on.